Hello everyone, we're here for the Valorous Season RTA tier list. I finished rank 5 this season. Um, I have finished all of fame before, for those of you who don't know, all of to finish all of fame you need to finish rank 1, 2 or 3 in that season. But without further ado, let's go into the tier list. Let me tell you how I chose to organize this tier list. I chose to organize it with triple S, double S, S, A, B and E tiers. Basically, let me tell you how what does each what each tier means. So triple S tier means they're probably the best units in the game. These units can be first picked. Uh, that's a very important criteria to be in the triple S tier. Uh, they're the best at their role. Uh, they're not weak or too weak to cleave. Right, you can play them against cleave. And uh, yeah, the, you, and also units that are probably in every game. If not every game, like every other game. Double S tier, it comes down, it comes close to triple S tier. Double S tier is probably units that are too unique at their role. They're the best at their role, right? And they do have the one of one of one big flaw they have is that they're probably weak to cliffs, and why they cannot go up to triple S tier. An example of that, a perfect example of that is Lionheart Sermia. She's on almost every game. She's probably the best bruiser out there, but she's very weak to cleave, and that's a reason why I didn't put her triple S tier. We have S tier followed by S tier. S tier is units that when picked they will probably most likely carry you that game they will fulfill their niche very very well as long as you draft them in the right spot they will carry a tier is kind of the same as s tier but even though picked in the right spot uh, they they can fail uh, uh, at carrying the match and a perfect example is that is Remnant Violet even though you picked him in the best possible scenario he can always lose the match or their units that even though they're good at their niche they're not picked often they're very rare to be seen and then B and E tier is just units that don't work or you draft them one in a thousand games type of situation okay so Let's go a bit into more detail about each unit. So, in my opinion, the best unit in the game, Lua, right? She's an opener that can wear guiding light and she disrupts an entire team by herself. So, in my opinion, this is the best unit in the game. Uh, kind of hard to use this unit. You need, uh, you need a lot of gear on her. She needs to be really fast to be used at her optimal level. Oh, another thing here. When I did this tier list, I consider the units uh, very, very, very well built, okay? Second best unit in the game, in my opinion, is Conqueror Lilius. Uh, an insane opener, very tanky. Her vigor buff is not balanced. Attack downs, she completely disrupts teams by herself. When you pick her, she's already choking down a lot of the units that you can pick against your team comp. So definitely, in my opinion, these two are the best units in the game. With Lua being, for sure, the best one. Especially since she can wear Guiding Light, since you is around, right? And then I think Navy Captain Landy, uh, just an insane bruiser. One of the few bruisers that you can first pick without being scared of anything. Her high rolls, right? When she decides to counter and solve you every time, she will win any matchup. Definitely, definitely. Uh, probably the third best unit in the game. We then followed up by Zio. This guy shaped the meta, right? Uh, you can no longer pick fast units and do not care about what your opponent is picking. You're just going to outspeed them and gear gapping them. That doesn't work now nowadays with Zio around, right? You can always take that turn one, stop their opponent, disrupt their turns. Wear book, very solid unit. Pyra. Very, very good opener, right? Her her strip into unbuffable and restrict is very good. One of the highest pace speed in the games. Uh, I call her a, a thief tank, right? Because she's so fast and provides that escort, a lot of utility to your team, a lot of disruption, attack buff. Very, very good unit. She pairs insanely well with uh, another other Cleaves units such as Jacko and Requiem Rowana, right? Where she can do a two-man cleave. 
save, Pyra goes, Jacko kills two units probably, Pyra goes, Rowana resets their entire team comp, Pyra goes, summaries area procs, etc. You can do a lot of things with this unit, you can if, you can play standard, you can play cleave, You can. She, she's a very versatile unit, but with her big flaws, right? It's not like she's like OP and wins the match, you pick her and you win, right? She has hard counters such as DJB, uh, Senya, etc. They're really good. Angel of Light, everyone knows how menacing this unit is. One of the best disruptors in the game, protecting your your team versus AoE with her passive, with the skill nullifier and the cleanse. Skill 3 non-contact strip into silence. We all know this unit chokes down 90% of the roster in E7 on, on terms of DPSs that you can pick against your team comp. So forever will be a very, very high tiered unit. Then we have Mediator Kaweric. But hands down, the best cleanser in the game. I call him an unstoppable cleanser, right? Because no matter what, as long as you don't reset him, obviously, he will be able to cleanse himself and then cleanse your entire team. A full cleanse into immunity attack buff, very, very powerful. His skill to strip attack down uh, a unit. Uh, also chokes down a lot of deep viable DPSs that you can pick against your team comp. Definitely, definitely a top tier unit, it, but ends down the best cleanser in the game. Followed up by ROL. This this knight is a menace. Most likely, not most likely, definitely the best mitigation in the game, providing you escort more powerful than Orius. And since she has escort in her kit, that means she can wear. Artif other artifacts other than Aureus in in the you can wear adamant shields for max mitigation value right just just by picking her you have a 30% damage redirection and a 16% damage reduction if you have her on adamant she can also wear holy sack since for example gala lilies is a unit now and then she goes for the one shot on ROL and then she just revives insane insane best mitigation in the game followed up by run this unit also shaped the match and will probably always shape the meta the fastest unit in the game right with the uh, basically a unit that gets that just dies to a run s3 it's very hard to be uh, uh under triple s tier right because run is the fastest in the game the best cleaver unit probably immunity is an immunity provider soul burning nor effect resistance defense break this unit has a lot going on and then we have briar which is there this is a recent addition that i did to my triple s tier briar which is area is in almost every game in RTA currently. Her uh, passive is very unique and very, very powerful. Denying revives, right? Denying Destina revive, denying Apocalypse Ravi revive, etc. Very, very good. A full strip into defense break and buffable is also back breaking. And I recently moved up this unit to Triple ST. I think she belongs here. Uh, you can definitely early pick her. You can pick her on one, two, and three peaks right that's already uh, a sign that she can be double s to triple s tier in this rta tier list and uh, she just has a lot of utility unique passive uh, and there's a cleave right now versus uh navy captain landy if your opponent goes navy captain landy you just pick briar witch's area and lionheart and what happens is you s3 with briar witch's area defense break their entire team Navy Captain Landy most likely counters, right? Because she's a counter Elbris unit, procs your Lionheart, and then your Lionheart comes in, sweeps their entire team, and they're dead. They can't even revive, right? So I think this unit is insanely strong right now in RTA. We have Spectre Tenebria. This unit has been top tier ever since her buff way back when in the primordials of Epic 7. By far one of the best bruisers ever made her permanent style being able to wear a book. She provides a lot of utility scaling DPS as well. Right now her value came, went down. A lot because they made Bellion, right? That denies uh, that hard counter Spectre Tenebria. And now they also made Navy Captain Landy, that also kind of hard counter Spectre Tenebria. But if you play with the Bellion Navy Captain Landy pre bands, you can first pick this unit. She's probably the best first pick if you pre band those two units. Still top tier bruiser for sure. We have this Tina. 
Uh, also a recent addition to my triple S tier. This Tina is hands down the best Soul Weaver in the game. Super tanky, super tanky Soul Weaver, hard to deal with, hard to kill. She has a lot of cleanse, a lot of healing, right? With her skill 2 being able to be used every other turn with a 50% CR boost. Her skill 3, I call it a reset button. She just full heals your entire team and uh, cleanses the, the all the debuffs. And if your units are dead, she also revived these units. It's insane, insane. She had an insanely high win rate last season as well. Another reason I moved her to triple S tier. And she was pretty much in every game, right? She also had hard counters units like Karina, Stania, right? It's very, 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 very good. So we were with an insanely high win rate. I think these are all the triple S right now. Um, these units are pretty much in every game. They're pre-banned, they're peaked. Uh, almost every Epic 7 match will have either one of these units pre-banned, peaked, post-ban, etc. We will always see these units. Moving down, we have the double S tier. These units are, as again, probably the best at their role or one of the best at their niche or you'll see them in almost every game as well. We we started with Lionheart Sam, Sermia. After Navy Captain Landy, she's probably the best bruiser out there. She Her damage is not balanced. Her S3 does so much damage and usually now, especially with the destruction set build with Golden Rose, right? Um, the match ends on her first, first S3 most of the time. She just does a lot of damage. One thing though about her, she's kind of weak to cleave if you early pick her. She's easy to aggress on. So a reason, that's the only reason I didn't put this unit on the triple S and I put her on the high double S tier. Followed up by Adin. I, guys, I'll be honest, I personally hate this unit. Um, her, she has, she's one of those, she's a, 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 an RNG unit, right? She's Dutch, obviously she's going to be an RNG unit. But she's one of those units that she's too good to not be picked. But she's an RNG unit and I kind of wanna don't want to pick her. I personally pre banned this unit. Um, her skill 2, very good versus cleave. She, 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 she has everything in her kit, right? Combat readiness push. Survivability through dodge. Life, innate life steal on her skill 1. Debuff on her skill 1 with the unbuffable. Um... Punish, punish, punishes your opponents for hitting her in, ca in the case where, where she dodges and she does her AoE attack, self attack buff. Skill T protects your team and has one shot potential. So there are definitely a lot going on. This unit also put a break on cleave comps, right? So another reason I rate her so high. She's also in insane versus a Ravi. And speaking of a Ravi, we have next Apocalypse Ravi. This unit used to be triple S tier on my list for the longest time, but I feel like now. Nowadays, every bruiser can match a Ravi in a 1v1. Uh, Breezeria also made her a Ravi anchor, uh, what we call a Ravi anchor, weaker. So I think this unit right now, she loses hard to the meta bruisers as well. Navy Captain Landy and Lionheart Sermia. She's only good, I feel like she's only good versus aggro. And she's not as good as she was. She used to be with aggro. Uh, still definitely a very strong pick, but I think as they release more and more units, um, they are uh, they all are good versus a Ravi. We have Ocean Breeze Luluka, one of the best disruptors in the game. Her, her CR boost into the strip silence and the blind, very, very powerful defense buff and ice cream makes you almost unkillable for two turns. So very, very, very very, very good disruptor. Uh, one of the best disruptors in the game for sure. Last Rider Kral. This unit, I used to have her also on tri triple S tier, but I feel like, especially with the release of Midnight Galas, Gala, uh, LR, LR Kral is not as good as it used to be because if there's one tank that Lilius can one shot, is Last Rider Kral. Also, his win rate in the World Cup wasn't high. I think it was negative win rate, actually. Still one of the best mitigation units out there with the skill tree that does a lot of damage, right? He's very cool and unique because he's a, an Aureus Knight that does a lot of damage. So he's very good with aggressive comps. I feel like you want to be doing aggressive comps when you're using Last by the Crow. Karina, everybody know, everyone knows this unit. Um... Her 50% CR boost into a skill 3. We, I, I joke around calling her the Water Wayong. They've made one of the tankiest units in the game, 
right? That you that punishes you for not focusing her. Right? That's kind of crazy, right? Like if you hit her, she's super tanky, right? You build her with like 2.6k defense, 18 HP, one of the tankiest units. And if you don't hit her, you'll proc her passive, giving a shield defense buff to herself, and then she goes S3, does a lot of damage. She has defense breaking both her buttons. Uh, very good anti-aggro, anti-cleave unit for sure. We have Midnight Gala Lilius. This is uh, the most recent unit added to Epic 7. Um, I still don't have that much experience with her in RTA, but from the few games I've played, this is where I predict she's going to end on. I think she's going to be decently meta. Basically, if you see a knight, you pick Gala Lilius. She will one-shot that knight. Attack buff your team, CR boost, a lot going on, hard to kill with her passive, decent versus landy with the guaranteed crit. I think this unit has a lot going on. We have Architect Laika, guys. This is the best force ban in the game. Every time, you will see, almost every single time we pick Architect Laika, she gets post banned, right? You just on for on picks. The problem is she's a 4-5 pick always, right? You can't really early pick her. That's one reason why she's not triple S tier. But if you have turn one priority, right? You're in your draft, you're having turn one priority, your opponent's not contesting your turn one, boom. Ar pick Ar Architect Laika, they are forced to ban. Because if they don't ban, what, one unit of your choice is dead, and she's going to do a lot of damage AoE as well. I mean, this unit is only in check by her base speed, and units like Zeo, Pyra, Conqueror, and Lua having higher base speed than her and being able to outspeed her. Because if you can build her this unit with like 310 speed, which is unreal, even I can't do that. She's probably one of the best units in the game, right? Her, her, her aggressive potential, her skill nullifier with push and attack buff and swift just makes you obliterate uh, enemy comps. Dilibet, in my opinion, an un it's, she, she's another what I call unstoppable cleanser on par with Mediator Kaweric, right? She's the be one of the best anti-debuffer, right? Anti if they're going to cleave you with debuffs such as Ran, Dilibet's one of the best units, very unique at that role. Solitaria... She's like a Bellion, but for focus, right? The nice focus. Uh, so much control in a single unit, right? Her skill one every turn. She has the potential to stun your entire team, debuff your entire team. So if they're, if your opponent's not drafting cleansers, you always want to pick Solitaria. And if your opponent is drafting focus units, you also want to be drafting Solitaria. Very, very good controlled unit. Same goes kind of for Pirate Flan, right? In a way, if your opponent's not drafting cleans, not drafting immunity, you go Pirate Flan and punish their... Um, greedy draft. Wonder Silk uh, is so hype up here along with Seed because these are the best speed imprints in the game, okay? If you want to be racing your opponent, you want to be picking a Wonder Silk, you want to be picking Green Seed, right? So these are the best speed uh, imprints in the game. The followed up, we have Edward Elric. Even though his win rate was not the best in uh, the World Cup, this unit shaped the meta and shapes the meta. Whenever you're drafting, right, if you're drafting uh, debuffers, you have to think about this. Can I kill Ed if my opponent kills Ed, right? If you're going like early P fun and stuff like that, you, you you will most likely not be able to kill Edward. Edward will solo your comp, right? So he shapes the meta, he punishes uh, debuff drafts. So um, very, very good at his niche. We fought Jack O. I think currently Jacko is the best cleave unit, right? If you have turn one priority, let's say we go zero skill three a unit, Jacko goes boom, that unit is dead. Jacko is in check though by one thing, she's fire, right? Which means she gets punished a lot by Karina and Ram, right? The one of the best um, anti cleave units is blue, so Jacko can't kill her, but still she's the best cleave unit in the game. We are followed up by Requiem Rowana. This unit is also slowly shaping the meta. If you don't have muscle icon, if you don't have immunity on your units, you are heavily punished by Requiem Rowana, but Requiem Rowana has a flop, you need to be taking turn one for her to work, right? But if you pair her with Lua, 
Conquer, uh, Pyra, Zeo, Run, right? They go, she goes, right? It's like she has the speed of those units. And then she resets their entire comp, provides you book every turn, defense breaks a unit. Very, very powerful unit. Not the easiest to draft, a lot of gear requirement to use her. But if you can do those drafts, she's very good. But the more and more the meta is going, people are moving, are using more and more immunity to counter her. So probably she will go down a bit. Uh, heavily punished by unit by qualities. I personally like this unit a lot. We have done uh, Lone Crescent Bellona. This unit I recently moved her uh, to double S as well, simply because she's probably the best bruiser versus Navy Captain Landy, and solely because of that I put her double S tier. Again, we have the S tier units. S tier units are also very good. They these units are more picked on slots 4 and 5 than slots 1, 2 and 3 in the draft phase, right? And um, they, if again, if they are picked in the right spot, if they are picked correctly, they will do their job, they will carry you the match, right? We have Paltis, obviously a, shep, a, meta, shep, a meta shaping unit, uh, denying that 50% CR bar. Uh, she was put, the Paltis was put in check a lot by Edward, right? She loses heart to Edward, for example, Dilly Bet. But still a very powerful and unique unit. Senya anti cleave. These are two bazaar, very good versus Pyra and Shields. There's a two bazaar though, is very weak to like bruisers like Avravi and Lionheart Sarmia and Navy Captain Landy. But he still provides his, the massive CR push into immunity, hard counters Pyra, so he's still good. These units, most of these units here, again, they're very good at their role, they're very good at their niche, and when picked correctly, they will carry you the match. Okay, uh, they are also unique. And then we have the A tier units, where's the majority, the bulk of the units where they are, right? Uh, um, these units, they can win the game, right? They, they, they're they good when picked correctly, but the problem is even when picked correctly, they have a decent chance to lose the match. I call them like, for example, these units picked in the right spot, they have like 80% win rate, picked in the right spots. These units picked in the right spot, they have like 60 so maybe 70% win rate. Pick in the right spot, right? If picked in, the, they might be lower or higher win rate depending on the draft. But yeah, that's the idea behind the eighth year, right? Units that we'll see often, but they they still picked in the right spot. They still don't. Uh, are not able to carry their matches. Dark Corvus, for example, uh, since the meta is heavy Navy, Navy Captain Land and heavy Lionheart Sermia, Dark Corvus is good versus those, but not always he can win, right? A high roll from Landy can kill your Dark Corvus. Lionheart skill does so much damage that with the her second skill tree, your Dark Corvus will die, right? Uh, things like that. Rylet, for example, if he doesn't dodge, you'll die. Even though he skill trees and maybe one shots Lionheart Sermia, then you still have to deal with the second DPS. He doesn't dodge and he dies and you lose. Right? Things like that. These units are good, right? But they might fail at their role. And then we have the B tier units or an E tier units. These units just don't work or they're too hard to make work or uh, yeah, they are in needs of buffs, right? They're in needs of buff. For example, uh, Twister they don't care on. I feel like even with the upcoming buff, I don't think he's going to be good. It's too hard to make these unit works. I'll have everything counters him. Yeah, and this is the uh, Valorous Season RTA tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your comments, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.